Hey everybody, welcome to another Pioneer video. This time we're playing Hardened Scales. So this is an archetype that exists in modern. Uh, it's not very good right now, but uh, there was a time when it was very good in modern and it's still a playable deck in modern. Uh, hardened Scales, uh, if a creature comes into play, or if a plus one plus one counter would be put on a creature you control, you get to add that many plus one instead. So the deck is just full of cards that like having plus one plus one counters on them. And Winding Constrictor, if you'd put a counter on something you control or you, you get one extra. So just Harden Scales and Winding Constrictor are the enablers, and then just try to go big faster than we're supposed to with all these other things. This particular build of the deck is from Adam Yeoman5 Hernandez. There's his Twitter information if you want to follow him. Uh, he's been doing a lot of work on Pioneer, and he's been writing about Standard for a while now. And the, the sideboard's pretty straightforward. Um, when, when we need to interact with our opponent, we'll bring these interactive cards in. But in game one, we're just trying to smash. So let's go smash some people. All right, so we're on the play. There's no hardened scales in this hand, but there is a winding constrictor and a million one drops. So I'm gonna keep this. All right, so time to figure out what the difference between this and experiment one are. So this evolves, if sent, evolve is when something with a higher power or toughness comes into play, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on your evolve creature. And this is when something with more power dies or enters the battlefield. Okay, and they're both 1-1, one, one, so neither of them trigger each other. So I'm going to play Experiment 1 first. Does that make any sense? I'm trying to figure out if any of these will trigger each other. Because I'm playing Constrictor on turn 2. I'm going to lead on an experiment one, because if they have removal, I'd prefer for Pelt Collector to survive. But uh, drawing something that doesn't have one power is going to be important. Maybe I should just parade out my ones and then slam Constrictor. If you get... Okay, so I definitely want to parade out my ones first because Constrictor will see itself when it comes into play. So it'll trigger all three of these and they'll all get plus two, plus two instead of plus one, plus one. So that is the way to sequence that. I just hope that my Constrictor does not get thought seized before that happens because that would be brutal. And if we do get to successfully trigger, oh, gather the pack. What is my opponent doing? Put a creature card from on the, into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. All right, so they've, oh God. Oh, is this a uh, Grim, not Grim Flayer, Soul Flayer deck? That's probably what we're up against here. Okay, so that was a pretty sweet draw because now we can play Constrictor I'm going to play experiment one first and then make a gigantic monster or several gigantic monsters, I guess. I don't think it matters how I stack these. All right, so these are all large now. And we can attack for nine, that's pretty sweet. And now all of my experiment ones can regenerate. They went straight from zero to three counters. So my opponent will need a soul flayer pretty much immediately. Soul flayer gains the abilities of creatures you delve away when you cast it. So it would come in with Flying, First Strike, Trample, Vidge, and Lifelink. All right, it turns out they're just dead. Didn't matter. Yeah, that was pretty messed up. Awesome. Powerful stuff there. So I'm going to want removal. 
and I might be able to pressure the the graveyard. Like if I can remove the relevant keyword abilities from the graveyard, I won't care about Soul Flare. Um, Thoughtseize might also be important. If that's the case, what do I board out? That's the hard part. So these all seem, every single card seems important. That's the primary problem here. Uh, Fatal Push is probably not going to be very good because Soul Flare is, I think it's a six drop. So I got to cut five more cards if I want to bring all this stuff in. Ballista seems important to uh, win game, like with the reach of Ballista seems important. I'm going to shave on Nissa's to get, like, I, I think if we can stop their big creature from coming, we can just win with our small ball game going wide. So just going huge doesn't seem necessary, especially on a three drop creature. Then Hangerback Walker is kind of made to be durable, and I'm not sure that they're going to be removing my creatures a whole lot. So I'm going to, oh, I need one more cut. I'll cut a Once Upon a Time. I've never played with Once Upon a Time before. I have no idea if it's like a four or zero kind of proposition, but it seems like having exactly one in a game is the right number, and I have one. All right, I'm going to keep. You can start betting on the over-under of number of times I mess up with Once Upon a Time in this league. <laughs> now I missequence it. So I'm going to take my draw step, and then I'm going to Once Upon a Time. Uh, we drew the second one. What a beating. Cast without paying cost. Deck's full of one drops. Uh, so I'll... I have two lands. That seems like plenty. So I could grab this Pelt Collector, or I could take a land. I'm going to take the Collector. I can cast it right away, hide my secret information. This hand having no uh, enablers is a bummer. Like no scales, no snake. But like we learned last game, Snake can arrive basically any time and just go bananas. We also didn't find Scavenging Ooze. Uh-oh. We could be facing down a Soul Flare immediately. Discard a creature, put a plus one counter on this, and it regenerates. So Walking Ballista, unfortunately not what we're looking for here. I'm just going to run out more pelts. I'm not going to run my Pell Collector into their Lot with Troll, because they want to discard creatures anyway. I'm not going to put them to the test if they have one. Oh, mana Confluence. Is this in case they want to cast Chromanticore? Because I can't beat a Chromanticore. I'm absolutely not going to block this. It has Trample, and it has Regenerate, and it can grow. So hopefully they don't have some combo kill that just makes me dead right now. I'm not sure what that would look like. Oh, no. Yeah, this is definitely a Soul Flare deck. Is Indestructible one of the words that Soul Flare can get? It must be. I should probably just look up this card. Okay, so here's Soul Flare. It's a six drop. If a creature with flying, first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, reach, trample, fidge. Okay, so yeah, just every single word. Got it. Come on, snake off the top. It's not super helpful. I could play Ballista and Experiment 1. I could also once upon a time. Ugh. 
I think I'm going to take two. And I'm going to play experiment one and just hold up once upon a time. Maybe they'll think I'm holding up a removal spell of some variety. Because that wasn't free to make that land drop. I did have to pay two life. I don't want to play Once Upon a Time right now, because if I find Scavenging Ooze, I don't want them to know they have to go off right now. Uh-oh. Salvage. They found the Flare, so I think I'm just dead. Alright, I'll let them do it for the camera. Though I should just concede to this. I believe it's lethal immediately. So I'm going to take 8 from this right away, 12. And if they have any creature to discard, it's 13. All right, what words does it have? Double strike, flying, haste, indestructible, trample, vigilance. OK, yeah, I'm dead. We did not explode fast enough there. All right. I have changed my mind on Thoughtseize and think Leyline of the Void is actually the right call. It probably should have been the first time, too. Because uh, Thoughtseize, I was thinking, clip the Grim Flare, but and I, then I don't care what's in the graveyard. And this is like kind of a real card otherwise. But now this has to be just better. All right, let's go win the game on turn zero with Leyline of the Void. Uh, this hand is so close. If one of these lands came into play untapped, I would keep this. But I don't think I can keep this hand as it currently exists. Alright, what, what does this hand do? Gets run over. And this hand is pretty strong. I don't think it's good enough, though. God, I need a ley line. All right, I'll keep this one. I'm going to bottom cemetery and one of these serpents. That that was rough. That that first hand was so close to being good. Maybe I should have kept it. It did have two oozes in it. Though I think it was right to mulligan that first hand. It just sucks that I also hit just like bricked my next two. If I had a good six, wouldn't feel so bad. All right, so we get to curve up a little bit here. Hardened Scales will give Serpent an extra counter, which will trigger Experiment 1, who will also get an extra counter. So we have a real clock on them here. Do they have a Fatal Push for me? Okay, no, they did not. All right, let's ride this uh, into the sunset. If they do manage to get a soul flare into play before they're dead, let's just hope that it doesn't have indestructible. Because I do have my only way to kill a soul flare. Bummer. They did have fatal push. They just didn't care about experiment one. There's the troll. All right, so I'm going to attack. If they discard a card, I can trophy this thing. Like, I don't really want to attack into this thing, but I'm not winning a game where I don't. Night Veil Predator, huh? So, Hexproof. Is that a... Did Hexproof exist when Soul Flayer was printed? Uh, yeah, it sure did. 
All right, so I just have to hope they don't have the flare because they can cast it with Hexproof, Death Touch, and Trample next turn. They can also Fatal Push right now since I gave them a Swamp. But I can regenerate from that. All right, all in, let's go. I think like Stone Coil Serpent or Walking Ballista are my best draws now. Rex Age. Okay. That could have been worse. Right, we're still just bringing the beats. 3-3 three, three is bigger than 2-1. That watery grave is scary though, because that means that they can actually cast this Night Veil Predator. Uh oh. Alright, they did not find a Soul Flare. They did find a Murderous Rider though, that's kind of brutal. Let's see what they end up keeping here. Alright, so... Oh, they kept the Overgrown Tomb. Okay. Does that mean they have a Soul Flare in hand already? It probably does. Yep, here's Soul Flare. What words does it have? Flying, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink. Lifelink's gonna be hard to beat. That's not helpful. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna have to do something very explosive very quickly. I have to pound through a 4-4 lifelink. They found another soul flare and a Samut. Double strike, Vig, haste. Okay, so now they have another thing with haste and death touch and flying and hexproof. Okay, I'm not winning this game. That that was pretty rough. Maybe I should have kept that first hand. It's hard to say. Really wish it had a uh, untapped land in it. Oh well. All right, so I'm gonna keep this. I can once upon a time for a black source. Though this hand can play for a little while without one. We did find Blooming Marsh. Sending two Constrictors to the bottom kind of sucks. But whatever, here we are. I think I want to hold on to this Serpent for a turn and just leave up Fatal Push. Because this deck's not very good at, other than Nyssa, the deck's not very good at adding counters once they're the creatures in play. But if I draw like a snake or a, a hardened scales before I play serpent, it does get bigger. Okay, glad we held up this fatal push. Bang. All right, now I play this right on time. So I could just play pelt collector No, th this creature has Trample. I'm going to cast Stone Coil Serpent, then just start going to Nyssa Town. Nyssa can make it a 3-3 next turn. I wonder if this is the new Devotion deck, whatever that may be. Oh, I could also Pelt Collector plus Stone Coil for 2 now. I'm going to do that instead. I want Nyssa to be as brutal as possible when she arrives. And I kind of just have to hope we're not dead to like Burning Tree Emissary, Nykthos, something. This is a pretty big game here, if she... 
Oh. The old beanstalk giant. This is some sort of gruel ramp strategy. All right, they left up one red. Let's see if they have the shock. Because if they don't, they're taking a thousand. And I can even just crush here because I have another Nissa. I don't have to worry about them attacking it with their Mystic. Well, they're in a lot of trouble here. I have the, the backup Nissa. See, unless they can clear me somehow. Oh no. Whenever a player casts a spell from their hand, that player exiles it, then exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a card that shares a card type with it. We may cast that card. Okay. So I might just be dead. Or maybe I win. It's it's one or the other. Let's see if, what the combo is. All right. So they probably only have one sorcery in their deck. It's Enter the Infinite. All right. You drew your deck. Now what do you do with it? Do they cast like Emrakul next turn? Because they don't have a next turn. I don't know what's happening. Walking Ballista. Okay, so this casts a. Okay, for Brigmos. Alright. Alright, that'll do. I understand now. I trust that they have some number of lands in their deck. Oh, we just. Definitely just got dunked on. It's really cool that the uh, adventure cards are sorceries for Possibility Storm, but creatures in your hand. All right, so how do I beat this ever? Hexproof from blue and black. Borborygmos is none of those colors. Uh, Thoughtseize is probably part of the package here. This, uh, trophy and Decay. So, hanger back walker, probably not what I'm looking for here. I gotta be a bit faster than that. I like my removal to slow them down. I like Nissa to push at the end. This is rough. <clears throat> yeah, definitely uh, one of the aspects of Pioneer I've been noticing is that the format doesn't have a lot of great answers, but it does have some pretty powerful combos. So these kind of fair decks, not that, I don't know how fair Hardened Scales actually is, but ugh. These decks that are just trying to like put creatures into play and attack with them, sometimes get buried pretty quick. Or like you just narrowly get edged out at the finish line by somebody who has a win the game combo and you don't. All right, so ballista or land? Uh, definitely ballista. I can collect some pelts. That will be a three three when it attacks next turn, thanks to constrictor. If it attacks next turn, they do have red mana. Ooh. So I could play No, I I'm going to just going to play walking or winding constrictor. Get my clock started and then I can ballista for 2 on 2 mana next turn. Like I could walking ballista or Abrupt Decay, this Elvish Mystic, but I think I need to get on board before I start going one for one and just hope they don't do something that kills me right now. Okay, Fertile Footsteps I can live with. Land? It's not a land. Uh, okay, so can't sneak in my Pelt Collector. Can play this Ballista for one, which will come in as a two. Kill that. 
And now we're just in a race. I can add a lot of power to the board next turn. Jade Light Ranger. Uh, I should respond to this trigger by killing it. Bang. Before it becomes a 4 3. Alright, Elvish Visionary. I can't imagine they actually want that. Nope. Alright. Another elf. That was the perfect draw. I'm going to attack first. No, do I attack first? No, I, I definitely just kill this thing. With them at five or eight life. I want to get in here. And I'm going to play Pelt Collector, not Stone Coil Serpent. Pelt Collector arrives as a 1-1 one, one when this would be a 2-2, two, two, but then Stone Coil Serpent makes this a 3-3 three, three next turn. So I'm actually attacking for more that way. Questing boy, okay. Oh, and actually make a human. Sweet. Well, didn't even want to attack with their vigilance, death touch, haste creature. Just, that's not what it's for. Alright, so if I just kill their human, they die. Lifelink is not one of the words that Questing Beast has. So, in for Xaxes. I feel like if we. Games we take off these combo decks are going to be exactly that, just in for Xaxes. So now we've seen Questing Beast. I don't think that changes my plan in any meaningful way. Same deck, let's go. Alright, so I'm going to keep this hand. It doesn't have any threats, but I can once upon a time for a threat, and I can thought seize them in the mid game. Like you don't need to thought seize on turn one against decks like this because their payoffs cost like four and five mana. Oh, they are gonna have a turn two Jade Light Ranger though. That's pretty powerful. <laughs> These once upon a time mirrors are so dumb. Because everyone gets a free spell all the time. Good luck, have fun. So, Stone Coil Serpent is my best one because I can curve it out. Like, I can play Hardened Scales now and then Serpent for three next turn. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Jade Lair Ranger is a good card, though. Let's just hope they hit two lands, I guess. I'd rather play against someone with a bunch of cards in their hand than someone with a large creature. All right, so they left Beanstalk Giant on top. That's their next draw, and they have a 4-3. Got it. So I have a 3-3. Three, three. I can make it a 5-5 five, five next turn, but I think I have to Thought Seize next turn. I hope I draw something else to do with my mana. Yeah, next turn is there a possibility storm turn, so definitely time to cast a discard spell. Come on, something to do with my other two mana. Abrupt Decay would be perfect. All right, I'll take a Hardened Scales, I guess. Two, 
two Lovestruck Beasts, and a Llanowar Elves. Alright, that's not really what we were looking for, but I guess I'll take one of the beasts. And I get to attack for three right now. Uh, Love Strike Beast being a perfectly playable card in this deck as well as a combo enabler is pretty cool. This deck is sweet. And they have lots of 1-1s, one so it's going to be on all the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can cast their Beanstalk Giant next turn, so I could be in some trouble. How about a one drop deck? Hook me up. One drop creature. All right. We got a one drop creature. I'm at nine. What do I have to do to survive here? So, one, two, three, four, eight. So I think I if I what happens if I minus Nissa? I eat this in combat, eat a one one, I take five, six, seven, eight, I go to one, it casts another giant thing. I think minusing is better than plusing. Alright, I get two counters. Or three because of double hardened scales. All right, so I just hope that they don't draw something that kills me off the top because they don't have a any great attacks here. Though they should just be like spewing their creature sideways. All right, and they can't make that big attack if they go for Beanstalk Giant, who is only a 5-5 five five currently. Yep, and they don't have good attacks. All right, let's keep the spells coming. That's not a spell. All right, this game's kind of interesting now. Whoever draws the first big spell, like board-changing spell, is going to win this game. Because right now it's kind of a standoff. And they're going to have to start pressuring Nyssa, because every turn they don't pressure Nyssa, I just put out another blocker. Alright, does not have trample. Does not have trample. None of these things trample. Yeah, if they don't pressure Nyssa, I get to go wide on them. And if they do pressure Nyssa, I get to start eating their creatures in combat. One, two, three. Okay, so they can Beanstalk again next turn. If they attack with just Beanstalk, oh, they're going, they're coming face. Okay. All right, let the fireworks begin. So, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven attackers. I have three blockers. I have to block some of their big creatures. All right, so putting plant on beanstalk is a freebie. And then if I block here, four, five, six, seven. If I block here and here, then that's four, five, six, seven. I'm at two. And I keep everything. All right, I'm going to block like that. All right, I'm at two. Let's draw a spell. That's a spell. That's a big fucking spell. I think I just win, actually. I 
right, so Ballista comes into play for four, or no, for five. Evolves experiment one. Nissa goes huge. So unless they have like fog, they're just dead. All right, we did it. That was kind of scary. All right, we're on the play. We're keeping our first hardened scales hand. Though it's a little awkward because I don't think I even want to lead on hardened scales because I have this pal collector into constrictor, which is like the one two. One two punch, I mean. It's a three three creature. Another once upon a time mirror. What are you digging for? It's kind of funny how Magic Online lines up sometimes. Like last night I played against uh, four like ramp fog decks in one league and this league I'm just playing against three dig through or once upon a time decks. They all seem to be very different though. So like classifying them all as the same deck is probably not reasonable. But that spell has certainly been on the stack every turn one of every game. Sometimes on both sides of the board. All right, Blast Zone Go is not particularly exciting out of my opponent. All right, now we get to do some fun stuff. All right, so Hardened Scales plus Ballista for one. It arrives as a three. All right, so they're still a turn away from blast zoning. This costs three to activate. Oh, castle. Rejuvenator, sure. Okay, so three, four, five. Oh, Radiant Fountain, bummer. It's already doing the win the game math might still win the game but okay so if I put a counter on ballista it's a 5-5 five, five. I can shoot rejuvenator attack for or, or no yes it's a 5-5 five, five. then I can shoot maneuver rejuvenator attack for four five six seven eight nine and then shoot them for four so that's not there yet So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirteen. I'm one short. What a tilt. Uh, I'm not gonna play another hardened scales into this blast zone though. Though I don't think blast zone is their plan. Oh wait, I forgot about snake. I had lethal. <laughs> Thank you, Magic Online, for carrying me. In real life, I would have missed something there. But they're not triggers, so I don't know. <laughs> GG, opponent. One of us played well. It was probably not me. All right, so I want Assassin's Trophy in this matchup because, like, clearing out a Blast Zone seems like it might be important to do. Uh, they didn't really show me targets for Fatal Push. And Thoughtseize might be good. I don't know how much I want to change up my plan because it was coming out pretty hot there and I liked it. Uh, that's too many cards. I'll just bring in two Thoughtseizes just in case. I, don't know, I didn't really see much of their deck. I saw Golos and they died. All right, I'm going to keep this on the draw. It is just a perfectly fine hand. Grazer. That card's going to save them a lot of life points. All right, once upon a time, as always. I'll grab this overgrown tomb, I guess. I don't think my life total matters much, but I guess we'll find out together.
what's the payoff in this format for Castle? Like, Primeval Titan's not in this format, is it? I don't think so, or else everyone would be playing it. All right. Rejuvenator for Blast Zone's pretty tight. I better play something that doesn't cost one. This is our first appearance of Hangerback Walker in this league. Powerful card. I'm not going to attack because they can just block with Grazer. And if they trade with Rejuvenator, then they're under no pressure to keep up Blast Zone. Our. You need three deserts, right? None of these are deserts? Okay. So they can get Field of the Dead and do the Honorary Desert Impression, but they won't have seven different lands because they have the two basic for us. So interested to see where this is going. Two Sanctum of Ugans. Ooh, this might be some sort of Emerge deck. I'm just going to cast Nyssa and get some counters on my things so I can start attacking. If I attack here, I lose Nyssa, but... Like, I have to attack with both if I'm going to attack with any. Alright, whatever. Let's get in. We're not winning this game if we don't attack. Just straight up. I'm curious what their uh, their combo kill is here. They're going to cast some big creature and search for two more big creatures. Oh, Metalwork Colossus is in this format. Obviously, that's not what they're doing because they don't have a bunch of artifacts in play. Jaddy Offshoot. That goes well with all your Blast Zones. Oh, no, they had another spell. I was kind of hoping that was it. All right, World Breaker. Oh, that gets to exile an artifact? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're not winning this game. I just want to see what they search for. Golos and... Okay, so they got Emrakul and Golos. All right. I've learned what I need to learn. We got to get up under this deck a lot faster than I did that game. All right, so Fatal Push like is kind of not great, but it does let me push for damage. I'm convinced I want Trophy. Yeah, I, I don't know. The Fatal Push is such a crapshoot. I'm not going to do it. Just run the same deck back. Just now I know what I'm up against. I can mulligan more aggressively if necessary. This one's definitely a mulligan. It doesn't do anything. Snap Keep. So I'm going to bottom one of these lands and just hope to draw another one at some point. So I can lead on Pelt Collector because I can scales whenever. I don't have any way to trigger currently. It's the castle. All right, another Collector. So I can Thoughtseize Collector or Scales Collector here. I think I want a Thought Seize. And then I can decide what I'm going to do with the rest of the hand. All right, so Rejuvenator Offshoot. Yeah, I, Rejuvenator was the card I was looking for with this Thought Seize for the most part. Went on to the battlefield. Uh, so yeah, Rejuvenator is the best card in this hand, though Golos is the payoff. So maybe I just take Golos. Let them rejuvenate. All right, and hope I don't die immediately to 
a blast zone. <clears throat> Alright, I would like to grow my collectors, please. Alright, that'll work. Though, God, scales is so good. Um, I think I Nissa and plus, and then I scales and minus next turn. That puts the most damage on the board. And if I draw a creature, we just got to go even deeper on that. All right, don't blast zone me. That's a huge beating. God, this card is good in this format. All right, let's draw a creature that doesn't cross one. All right, so now I guess the question is, do I run this scales into the blast zone or not? This blast zone clears out all these blockers also. Like I can just plus again. But if I don't minus, then they don't have to pop it. All right, I'm gonna go for this here. I have to pressure the blast zone, unfortunately. I'm just gonna lose a a thousand permanents to it, but they're losing two permanents also. There are three if you count the blast zone, so it's kind of a three for three, I guess. It's an ugly three for three, but it, it counts. Unfortunately, these are pelt collectors and not experiment ones, or else I'd be just totally fine. So that this looks like a hour. Oh nope. I just wish it was an hour. They drew an Aldrazi. World breaker. Alright, that doesn't actually I mean other than being a five seven with a reach. That that's a pretty big game. But it did not actually do anything because Blast Zone was gonna kill the the other card anyway. Alright, so do I attack? I don't think so. It's plus three, plus three, and not trample. Okay. Alright, so we're back into this holding pattern. Though they have better top decks than I do. And they, they're sitting on that blast zone. Alright, it's time. They're blasting. So my pelt collectors and their defense creatures go away. It's world breaker versus my little world here. This doesn't have vigilance, does it? No, it just has reach. Okay. So... If they attack with this, I just chump with a plant, then I can shoot Rejuvenator with Ballista and be back on offense. Oh no, of course they have another spell. Oh, that's not even good, is it? I just reach. Okay, and I'll block it with the same plant token I would have otherwise. Doesn't have trample. Okay, I'll take it, opponent. Ooh, scales. That's a good one. <laughs> My opponent said in the chat they thought it gave trample. Alright, so. 
I'm going to make a plant. I think it's better to pump Ballista this turn. Because that represents actual damage right now. Hardened Scales is just an investment in the future dam of damage. Like if I draw a land, I can Scales plus up Ballista. Oh no. That's a good draw. Only we have seven or more lands. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, well, they're pretty close. They just need one more land. And this only casts colorless spells, so. All right, Rejuvenator is not a super spicy find off of the Once Upon a Time. It is a, a chain of cards though, like it found a two for one. All right, another castle. So they have infinite mana if they ever get to a point where that matters. Land would be an insane draw because that would let me cast scales, ramp up my team, Okay, I was just about to say that uh, they have an interesting choice of if they want to keep me in the abyss here or if they want to stop me from attacking. Uh, should have been more specific about lands. All right. Uh, Blooming Marsh. I'll play that. I'm going to make another plant and... I'm just going to attack with my two creatures. Because if they block with Rejuvenator, then I get to... Okay. Yeah, there weren't good ways to block there that made me want to pick off Rejuvenator before combat, because now I get to kill both of these things. Oh no, a redraw. Just draw a land. Pass the turn. Don't do more stuff. Rejuvenator. <laughs> These Rejuvenators have been pretty good. Though I'm sure that's not what they wanted. Oh, Cascading Cataracts. Okay, so if they find Golos, they get to start spewing spells off the top of their deck. Alright, they correctly identified it's time to stop attacking. Ooh. And I correctly identified that it's time to draw a removal spell for World Breaker. They can rebuy it, but that'll take some time. All right, this is a turn where I definitely zap before combat because that represents a lot more damage. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You are dead. Pew pew. Good games, opponent. Yeah, that turn where they attacked for no reason, thinking that their thing had trample, was probably the whole game, because that let me get in for a bunch of damage, and I just killed them for exact seize. So, reading the card is important. We all saw me on camera read that card several times to make sure it didn't give trample also, so I see why my opponent would have thought that. This hand is not a keeper. I would keep it with two lands, but that's not what I have. All right, this hand's pretty sweet. Keep bottom one of the overgrown tombs. We have the, the combo, Pelt Collector into Winding Constrictor. Ooh, a blue deck. We haven't played against any of these yet. All right, once upon a time, per the huge. Ooh, wind, 
another winding constrictor. Does that do anything? Uh, it triggers this other pelt collector, but I'll need a third land to do it. But if I curve out, like, okay, yeah, I do want this other winding constrictor. I just need another land to make it all happen. It sucks I had to show them winding constrictor, though, and reveal my plan. Because now they know they have to shock this thing right now if they're going to shock it. Oh, dear. I was not expecting the uh, Steam Vents, the Is It deck, to produce Field of the Dead. I officially don't know what's happening anymore. Alright, let's draw a land next turn so we can Pal Collector, Wine and Constrictor, Bash for a Gazillion. Land, yes. All right, I even drew the, the ugly Llanowar Waste. I have one that looks awful. All right, so that's gonna be a thousand thousand, a four four. All right, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. They're not quite dead on board. I need one more point. Mystic Sanctuary, nice deck. What the fuck is happening? All right, walking blist off the top. Let's go. Mm. That kind of sucks. I'm going to cast the Once Upon a Time, though, rather than the Hanger Back. Ooh, Stone Coil Serpent. Yeah, you're pretty good. All right, so whatever their plan is over there, they have to do it right now because they are very dead on board. They have to wrath me or oh, whatever their combo is. All right, the second field of the dead is probably not what they were looking for. Growth spiral. And concede. Okay, deal. I probably want Thoughtseize against this deck. And Assassin's Trophy can destroy a land. Uh, Fatal Push doesn't seem good. This this sideboard uh, plan has looked pretty familiar in all my games so far. All right. Let's -a go. Maybe I want all four Nissa. Oh, too late. Deck submitted. Maybe I want all four Nissa and one less once upon a time. Ooh, so close. So I'm on the draw. How many lands are in this deck? Let's let's go to the list. 22. So there's 21 lands in my 53 card deck. That's slightly better than one in three cards is a land. And I get two draw steps. And I can actually play the game a little bit. I'm going to keep. Yellow Swaggins over here. So I can harden scales on one. All right, easy game. Never didn't have it. All right, so I can stone coil for three or hanger back for two. I think hanger back for two is probably just better. All right, there's the hanger back walker. I'm gonna hold on to this stone coil serpent because that it plays on every part of my curve, which is not true of all my other cards. 
Right, these lands don't cast Teferi, so I'll take that at least. Flame sweep. Oh, that was awkward. Good thing I led on the creature that I did. Okay, so now I get to experiment one, hanger back walker. Experiment one becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Nice. Uh, this deck definitely just goes real stupid with hardened scales in play. Yeah, that flame sweep was awkward because if they don't cast it then, maybe it doesn't kill anything ever if I just grow my walker. But yeah, just turning a 2 2 into 2 1 1s is not really where my opponent wants to be. All right, so I can pick this off with Ballista and continue attacking. Bummer. All right, so. How, what's the best way to play this? Three, four, five, six, seven. I cast Ballista for two. I could also just Stone Coil for four. And that puts a giant trample creature into play. Yeah, Ballisting, yeah, I'm doing this. Because this also grows Experiment 1. to epic proportions, and I can burn them out. I want to get my trample creature into play in case they start making zombies next turn, plus I can just burn them out with Ballista in the future. And experiment one can regenerate twice, so they're gonna really have to kill it hard. They keep topping with this search for his canton, it's making me nervous. All right, Hour of Promise. This is going to be good for, all right, only two. I guess they could get another field and a land and get four zombies. Yeah, so a, a different land and another field for, for the four zombos. If I draw a land, I can cast Ballista for three. All right, so I can only Ballista for two. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that first. That'll at least give me options. So now they can't just like easily double block Stone Coil Serpent. They have to triple block it if they actually wanna kill it. Okay, so I am going to pick off this zombie so Stone Coil Serpent can get through. And it has Trample, so it is actually getting through. All right, we just converted my blockable creature to an un to uh, some unblockable creatures. I'm into that. Having these three black cards in, stranded in hand is kind of whack. Ooh. Each creature without flying. Okay, they weren't interested in the top half. I think they needed to draw that, right? Like, kill the flyers and kill the non-flyers? Like, I can just regenerate experiment one. Each creature without flying. All right, I think they just died. Oh, I, I need to come up with one more damage to make them dead. And that'll do it. Yeah, if they drew that, I think they win. Like, if they just... X is one on the top end, and then... I don't know. I, I didn't actually do the math. I, I don't know how much mana they had. They probably did what they had to do. And we're on the draw with a totally keepable hand. It's got a scales. It's got lands. Pretty much a perfect hand here. Another blue deck. Hangerback Walker. 
I think I want to make sure I hit my land drop because I have threats to deploy. So I'm good over there. I'm going to lead on scales so I can go experiment one stone coil serpent next turn and just have a bunch of power in play. And then I can start with my XX creatures. All right, they just had land go. What's up, Winding Constrictor? All right, so this will arrive as a 2-2 two -two and create a 3-3 three -three if they don't shock in response. All right, they did shock in response or some variant thereof. Charter course. All right, so it looks like we're up against a Phoenix deck. We've got a lot of graveyard hate to bring in. We discarded Cruise. Deal. Hmm. So I can Nissa plus, and then next turn make some big things, or I could just try to make big things now. I think I just want to attack and cast Winding Constrictor actually. That sets up the biggest next turns. Or I could cast Nissa and plus and then Winding Constrictor and minus next turn. Yeah, I think I like that better actually. Yeah, so if I draw land, I can play Constrictor and one of my X creatures and then minus Nissa and make everything huge. Is it charm for looting mode? The world's worst faithless looting, but still faithless looting for the most part. Ooh, fiery temper, that's a good one. All right, and my serpent is dead. All right, come on deck, land. Yes. All right, now we're going off. Make my monsters grow. All right, that was bananas. <laughs> then I can just do it again next turn if Nissa is still alive. It's really hard to, and by hard I mean impossible to flip thing in the ice from this position in this format. There's no Mana Morphos or Faithless Looting, which are the big changes from the modern version of the deck. Okay, so Leyline of the Void, slamming that right in. Scavenging Ooze coming in. And I think I want to add Decay to my Fatal Pushes, but not Trophy. Alright, so... Seven cards coming in. What's coming out? Um, Walker is a little slow, I guess. Um, these Once Upon a Times are always just so cuttable. Maybe that card's busted and I'm just thinking about it wrong, but it, it always seems so cuttable. Uh, Ballista is good for the reach. Nissa is very good too, but... It also costs three. Stone Coil Serpent's great. It has reach in this matchup where they want to attack me with some 3-2 flyers. I wonder if it's ever right to shave on Harden Scales. Like, if I just play a fair game where with Leyline, they're not going to win. So, like, I don't really need to go busted over them. This might be totally wrong. I'm going to have to do some some studying how to play this deck but it seems reasonable that I could cut one of them because it's a terrible top deck in the late game too and I gotta cut one more thing if I want to stick to this plan it's probably either Ballista Serpent or Once Upon a Time uh, I'm actually just gonna cut another hang hanger back walker I'm off it. This Ballista and Serpent 
go face the hardest. Like, hanger back walker is, is good against removal, but I'm going to overload their removal with my one drops anyway. Kaka! So unless they have a Brazen Borrower in their 75, they might just lose to this Leyline. Like I've I played a lot of Phoenix in this format already, and Leyline is actually just crushing. And our hand is pretty good outside of the Leyline. We Like we get to Leyline and then also have Pelt Collector plus Grow It on turn two. Blat. Hard mode, let's go. Ooh. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm going to lead on that. So I can play Pelt. So I get to just make the same curve that I was going to make anyway, but now all of my creatures are bigger than they should be. It's, yeah, it's Thing in the Ice or Bust here. So. <laughs> Always had it. So I cast a 2-2 two, two, that makes a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, there's no free spells in the format. So Oh, Sweltering Suns. That's really good. Okay. Fair enough. You got me. I'm going to play the 2-2 two, two Ballista. Because even if they flip thing this turn, I can just Abrupt Decay it next turn. I can deal them one damage on the way out. Yeah, Sweltering Suns, huh? This is a hardcast Phoenix. Ooh, a hardcast Drake. <laughs> I don't have a good plan for that. That's not true. I can kill it with this Ballista. It's a 4-4, four, four, and now I'm winning. <laughs> so if they flip thing this turn, I just deal three to them and put my Ballista back in my hand. All right, so they're going to try to race this Drake up to combat mode because Drake counts exiled cards. So it could get up to plus four right now. Oh, just plus two, huh? Oh, ch they did not want Chandra. That's kind of terrifying. All right, so they're targeting Walking Ballista with Magma Spray. Why would they do that? Because they have another shock, probably. I'm just going to kill Crackling Drake. Because if this resolves, then I can't do that anymore. Because as soon as I take two counters off it, it'll die. And I'm also doing it before the thing trigger. Because if they respond with another instant, bounce their drake, and they have their drake back. Yeah, it looks like they just tried for that exact line, and I denied it. All right, that was a good trade. And I wish I had one more turn, but... All right, so... Oh, they didn't even flip the thing. Deal. Nissa is a powerful card. I would like to pay two life. So I, I'm going to make a token. The token will die when Thing flips, but if I decay in response to the spell, then Thing just won't flip. So if they like try to opt in the end step, I'll just kill the Thing, and then we're miles ahead.
They're playing like they have a Phoenix in hand. Like, the fact that this is not an Awoken Horror is pretty suspicious. Lightning Axe targeting my plant. Uh, sure. Joke's on you, buddy. It gets bounced before it even dies. So they have two cards left in their hand. Hopefully some number of them are just dead. <laughs> There's a backup ley line in case they do have Brazen Borrower. I don't have any looting effects or like Liliana of the Veil, vale, which is not in this format obviously, but there's no reason to keep the ley line in my hand. Rot row, time for a Ballista. Boo. Alright, so if I minus, I'll at least have a 2-3. If I plus, maybe I won't. I'm, I'm going to plus. Let's keep that going. Because they, they'll have to cast or get two spells into exile to kill Nyssa this turn. And the next Nyssa, I want to be as devastating as possible. Alright, so Op's a pretty good spell. Did I board out Anissa? Yes, I did. Okay. Here comes Drake. Nissa's at one. Another thing. Bummer. All right, there are two fatal pushers left in my deck. I use my only abrupt decay. Walking Ballista is one of my best draws. Experiment one is not quite what I was looking for. But it's a it's a card. Alright, another thing. Gonna lose Nissa here. Ooze your daddy. Ooze gets enormous with hardened scales. There are, in fact, creatures in the graveyard. All right, so I will have an attack with at least one creature next turn. Don't have an attack now. There's three creatures in the yard, so Ooze can be a 7-8-8 uh, eight, eight going into next turn. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so they keep making land drops, even though they have looting cards in their deck. So that makes me think they're holding a treasure cruise. Chomp. giant creature let's keep it going oh my god all right don't have a counter spell if they don't have a counter spell we're just crushing here or if they can't flip thing but that's pretty hard to do from this spot if they can't flip them right now then they're gonna get run over Lightning Axe targeting Ooze. Is that what they're tar or experiment on? Which is also an Ooze. <laughs> but I do have two Oozes in play. Alright, so that stops that attack for this turn. 
but everything else still crunches. They're going to lose one of their things blocking ooze. And they're going to take four. And then their one, their two card hand has to produce three spells here. All right, that's not a spell. Let's see if they even attack. All right, I didn't think they could. I'm just in with everything. That's where we are. They'll probably block experiment one with crackling Drake. I'll just regenerate it. Make a plant. I'm not going to play this land. I'll let them wonder what my last card is. Just a little more. Ooh, they blocked wrong. They should have... They had a thing with three counters on it, but they chumped with that one, and they kept around the, the one with uh, four counters. If they have spell spell here, though if... If I was right in their last card in hand is a treasure cruise. Oh no. Strategic planning. If this finds any one drop, though if they blocked with the correct thing, I would already be dead here. Or I guess if they flip thing, they lose their Drake. So I'm not actually dead. It's just, it just sucks. All right. Looks like we, we threaded the needle there. That uh, other thing in the ice would have flipped. All right, so that was a cozy little 4-1 with Hardened Scales. This deck does seem really good. Uh, does the explosive draws are really powerful. The the hanging power with uh, Walking Bliss and Stone Coil Serpent in the late game was really impressive. So there's a lot to like about this deck. I'll probably be working on this one some more in the future too. Thanks for watching. See you next time.